Hey everyone! Welcome to day one of my 12 days of interactive December dailies video series. Today I'm working on my title page for my 10 by 8 December daily album, and I'm going to be creating an interactive night scenery shaker page. First off, I'm creating an alcohol inked background for my night scenery. Tim Holtz coincidentally has some Yupo paper sized at 10 by 8 inches, and that size will be perfect for my 10 by 8 album. From left to right, I have the Tim Holtz alcohol ink colors in pitch black, denim, monsoon, and stone washed, and I also have the alcohol mixative in silver. After that, I have some blending solution from Tim Holtz, as well as a cheap plastic paintbrush that I like to use for all of my alcohol ink techniques. And you'll also notice that I'm working on a silicone mat, and that'll make cleanup a bit easier later on. I'm starting off by putting on quite a bit of blending solution onto my page so that the inks will move and flow around organically on my page. And then I'm just dropping a few drops of each of my four colors onto the page, making sure to concentrate the darker colors at the top of the page and the lighter colors at the bottom of the page. My goal here is to create kind of like a glowing effect at the bottom of the page where my houses and trees are going to sit. After that, I'm going to drop a couple of drops of the silver mixative throughout the page. Now, a couple of things to note about the silver mixative is that it contains a pigment that kind of settles onto the bottom of the bottle. So make sure you do shake it up before you use it. And also, um, once it's on the page, it tends to kind of float up to the surface when you mix it with other alcohol inks. So it will kind of predominate um, in the areas where you have it. And um, make sure you use it sparingly or it could potentially overtake your other colors. So you'll see here that I'm using a very small amount of that compared to the rest of the colors that I've put down on this page. And part of the reason why is um, actually because my bottle got kind of clogged while I was using it and I was too lazy to go and unclog it during the video. But I wouldn't have used much more than what I have already here. Next, I'm just taking my paintbrush and swiping it through the alcohol inks horizontally, starting at the top of my page in the darker inks and working my way down to create a nice gradient. Depending on how much or how little blending solution you put on your page initially, you might have to work a bit quickly with this because the ink does dry quite quickly. And you might want to play around with how much ink you have versus how much blending solution you have too. Um, so here you'll see that the colors I have on the bottom are a bit washed out and the brush lines are a bit too streaky for my liking. Um, so I decided to go in with some more alcohol ink just to make those colors a bit darker and a bit more vibrant on the page. And you'll see that after I've added that extra ink onto the page, the inks really start to flow well together to create that nice ombre effect th that I'm looking for. I just love playing around with these alcohol inks so much because they are so forgiving and you can create such cool effects with them. So here the bottom of my page is actually mostly dry now, um, whereas the top of the page is a bit wet, um, so that's how quickly it dries. Um, but I'll just zap it quickly with a heat gun to help it along. And because Yupo paper is made of a synthetic plasticky material, you don't want to heat any one particular spot for too long because it it actually starts to melt and warp your page. So this is what the alcohol inked panel looks like in the end. And I just love that when you tilt this in the light, it kind of hits those um, sparkly silver bits and I think it looks really pretty. To clean up my work surface, I'm not going to waste any of this ink that I have on my silicone mat. So I'm just going to sprinkle a bit more of that blending solution directly on the mat. And here I'm just taking some normal white cardstock and swiping it through the areas with color on my mat. And I like to save these scrap pieces to put through my die cutting machine to make embellishments for other projects or to use as backgrounds for my cards. And once I'm done cleaning up most of that ink on my mat, I'm just using some paper towel with some isopropyl alcohol um, or you can use some hand sanitizer as well to wipe the rest of this up. Next, I'm going to start working on my shaker pouch. So usually when I make shaker pouches, I'll use foam tape and acetate to hold the shaker bits in. And you can see this process in my latest Stretch Your Stamps December Daily video featuring digital stamps. But because I'm going to be adding a lot of dimension onto the front of the shaker panel with the wood veneer houses and the felt trees, I wanted to try not to add too much bulk to the shaker itself. 
So instead of using foam tape and acetate, I'm going to be using some plastic packaging. Um, this used to hold a package of 12 by 12 scrapbooking paper from my local scrapbooking store. And I'm going to wrap the front of my alcohol ink panel with this packaging to hold the shaker bits in. So I just trimmed the plastic down to size. Um, I want to leave about half an inch of plastic overhanging all four sides so that I can fold that overlapping bit over and tape it onto the back. And I'm just using some 3 8 inch score tape to secure that into place on the back of my alcohol ink panel. Before I'm sealing my pocket shut, I'm just going to swipe the front of my alcohol ink panel with this anti-static powder tool um, just to remove any potential stickiness from the alcohol ink background panel, um, as well as remove any static that might um, cling to some glitter that I'm going to be adding later on to my shaker. And here I'm placing the alcohol ink panel so that the front of the panel faces the plastic sheet and then it's centered on the um, plastic sheet that I have. And I'll just remove the tape backing here and wrap the plastic around that alcohol ink panel onto the back to secure it um, as tightly as I can. Once I have three of the four sides sealed up, I'm going to start putting in my shaker bits. So here I'm using the Martha Stewart Crystal Fine Glitter, um, a handful of the Silver Star Sequins from Ali Edwards' Star Mini Kit, and some other kind of wintry silver and white sequins that I had in my stash. And once I'm satisfied with the amount of shaker bits in my pouch, I'm going to seal off that fourth edge right at the top. Once that's done, I'm going to start decorating the front of this shaker pouch. My plan is to have some snow drifts cut out from um, white cardstock at the bottom of my page, and then attach these wood veneer houses and the felt trees to the snow drifts to create a wintry night scene. And because my alcohol inked background is so blue and cool toned in color, I'm only going to be using the cool toned houses, um, like the gray and the blue and the mint ones, as well as the white felt trees. So here I'm just freehand cutting some snow drifts out of white cardstock and I'm going to cut out two of them to layer on top of each other on the front of my panel. And now I'm just playing around with the positioning of the houses and the trees to create some clusters on my layout. To include the year 2021 on my title page, I'm using the white plastic numbers from last year's December Daily Collection from Ali Edwards. I just liked the way the white stood out from my dark background. And because I don't want any adhesive to be showing through the acetate, I'm going to use one of these banners that I've fussy cut out of one of the 10 by 8 pattern papers to adhere the numbers down. So here I'm just playing around with all the different banners and seeing which ones I like best. And I decided to pick one that didn't have any red in it because of the cool tones that were going on in the rest of my layout. And a fun thing that you can do with these banners is that um, if you look for where the banner folds over itself in the graphic, you can cut a little slit so that it looks like the banner is wrapping around something like these acetate numbers here. And that's what I ended up going with with this banner that says documenting joy. I also decided to include three of the stars that I fussy cut out from that same pattern paper that the banners came from, and I'm using my Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen to add a bit of glitter onto each of those stars. Before I adhered everything down to my page, I decided to ink up the edges of my snow drifts a bit, um, just to give them a bit more definition so that they stand out a bit more. And I'm just using a blender brush and the Weathered Wood Distress Ink to gently add a bit of color to um, that very edge. Just shaking my shaker pouch so that all the shaker bits are moving towards the top of the page so that I have a bit of a flatter surface to work on on the bottom. And now I'm ready to adhere everything down. For the snow drift that's sitting in the back of my scene, I'm going to use my score tape to adhere that down onto my shaker panel. And for the snow drift that's going to sit in the front, I'm using some 3D foam tape so that it'll give enough room for me to slide in some houses and trees in the back. 
And to attach my houses and trees, I'm just using score tape again. Um, I've never actually used felt embellishments before, so I have no idea how well this is going to hold up over time. Um, but if you have a favorite adhesive that you like to use um, with felt embellishments, feel free to let me know in the comments down below and I will try that in my next video. As I was adhering these down, um, I kind of forgot where the trees were supposed to go relative to the houses, so um, I had to do a bit of rearranging to um, make them look nice again, but I like the way that this one turned out um, more than the one from before, um, just because I do have more room in that center to adhere my title piece. To adhere my 2021 title numbers down, I'm just lining the top of this banner with some score tape on the back and then overlapping my acetate numbers with the banner just a tiny bit so that the score tape holds them down. And then I'm using some foam tape to sandwich those numbers into place. And the good thing about this foam tape is that if you remove the tape backing, it's malleable enough that you can curve the tape to line up with the edge of that banner. After that, I just attached my three stars to the shaker pouch using some more foam tape. And in this video, you'll see that the one at the end of 2021 is a bit crooked, um, and I did end up fixing that later on after the video. Um, it just bothered me too much that it wasn't exactly straight on that page. And once everything is glued down, I'm just going to attach the whole panel onto my base page with the binder ring holes um, already punched through it. And I am using 5 8 inch score tape here um, just because this page is quite a bit heavier with the shaker bits and the wood veneer and the felt trees. And so I just wanted it to um, make sure that it stays on my base page and doesn't end up peeling off uh, later on. So this panel ended up being a bit thicker than I had originally thought it would turn out to be, um, but as the opening page to the album and kind of like a more special page, I really don't mind it being a bit thicker. And I had also debated about using the large red felt numbers instead on my title page and going with like a red, green, and gold theme instead, but I just love how these serene blue tones in this wintry scene just really capture the peacefulness and calmness that the quote on the front of my album evokes. If you liked this video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure to check back during the month of November and December and January for more December daily videos. Thanks so much for watching.